Uh, good afternoon, it's Roger Gilbert here reporting from KL in Malaysia. It's the last day of Livestock Asia 2018 here in Kuala Lumpur and I'm with Mr. Gandhi. Mr. Gandhi is the Chief Executive Officer of UBM in Asia and he's uh, the organiser responsible for this event. And I'd just like to ask him about how the event has gone this year uh, being the ninth Livestock Asia uh, held uh, in Kuala Lumpur today. Uh, thank you, uh, Roger, for this uh, discussion. We are absolutely uh, elated by the result uh, of the last uh, two days, and today is the last day uh, for this exhibition. I was walking around today talking to the exhibitors and the visitors. Uh, they are seeing the number of visitors, especially the international visitors. Uh, we had an increase of approximately... Uh, over 50% uh, compared to the last edition uh, for this exhibition. I think there's a couple of reasons uh, for the growth. One is the uh, there is a concerted uh, program and policy of the Malaysian government uh, to bring the uh, livestock uh, industry to the next level uh, under the policy of uh, they say TN50 in the tea, it's it's that's how it is branded as in Malaysia, and this program of TN50, the uh, agriculture and livestock uh, sector, uh, has been given priority uh, for modernisation. Excellent. And uh, I heard at the opening specifically they were talking about the dairy industry and the development there. D is that reflected on the show floor? Absolutely. No, uh, dairy uh, is a little weak in Malaysia. Uh, however, there is a uh, plan uh, in support you know, to increase the uh, production of dairy and not only production but also to increase the per capita consumption uh, in, in the country. And it's not only in Malaysia but the whole region, whether it's Vietnam or Thailand, uh, Philippines, uh, everywhere, uh, there is a concerted uh, effort you know, to promote dairy production and also consumption. And we also heard at the opening about the uh, approach towards less use of antimicrobials. Do we see that reflected in the show as well? Yes. Uh, if you look at if you walk on the show floor, uh, you can see a lot of uh, promotion uh, of uh, probiotics, uh, seminars that is taking place now, how to manage, because this is a global issue, uh, the antimicrobial uh, policies. Uh, the government uh, of Malaysia has been... Uh, uh, engaging with the industry instead of going on a hard manner they are saying let's partner together with the industry and uh, face out not really face out only use of uh, antimicrobial in targeted uh, situations and the farmers are really cooperating and also uh, the uh, enforcement uh, is also helping the change of attitude and culture uh, in the farm uh, in this region I noticed that you had several ex uh, several uh, seminars on the show, and one of them was uh, aquaculture. And I also noticed several exhibitors uh, focusing on aquaculture specifically. Is aquaculture a growing part of your exhibition here? Exactly. In fact, aquaculture, uh, we just introduced it uh, into Livestock Asia, uh, because if there's a big overlap in the feed, for example, and uh, the policies or regulations uh, for livestock or aquaculture in terms of uh, delivery of the food uh, is very similar. Uh, for example, usage of uh, you know, control of enteromicrobials, uh, it's the same. And it's al also going into the same feed. So one of the target visitors for this event are the feed millers. And we have a lot of feed millers coming here, learning, uh, sharing knowledge, uh, and the seminars are here to talk about uh, uh, those parts, you know, both in aquaculture and in uh, livestock. I've noticed on the last day here such a relaxed attitude. Uh, nobody is leaving early. Everybody seems to be having uh, keen discussions. And it's just a very comfortable business environment. Is that what you intended? Exactly, because we think this is a B2B event. Uh, and we wanted to create an atmosphere where actual business can be conducted. Not only on the booth floor, we also have a location for matchmaking. Mm. Uh, for example, this morning we hosted a Malaysia-Vietnam uh, enterprises 
a round table discussion where we linked uh, uh, within the ASEAN countries uh, businesses because ultimately government and governments in this region can meet and put in place uh, policies and regulations but the development of actual business happens between private sectors and making sure that the right private sector meet their counterpart is the key uh, objective of this event and we are pleased to say uh, that you know, we have achieved that you know, as of today. Well, congratulations. And how long is it to us uh, to look forward to the next event? The next event is going to be uh, two years from now. It's a biennial event. Interestingly, what we have decided is for 2020, uh, this event, Livestock Asia and uh, Aquaculture Asia, will move to a city uh, known as Malacca. It's a historical city It's uh, in within Malaysia. Uh, this city uh, has got a history of the Portuguese, the Dutch, mm -hmm. and the English, yes. and even before that, the Indians. So it's a, it was a trading melting pot of the, this region. People who know history, they will know it was called the Malacca Empire at one time, and that was the headquarters of the kings at the time. So we're going to move this event there. Very simple reason is that the entire aquaculture and the farming industry is there. So we are going to go to the heartland uh, where the farmers are. Uh, for this, that's going to be one of the things we are doing in 2020.